Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well and uh, welcome aboard my trusty old BMW GS where today I'm riding off to meet my mates Jeff and Dan for another biker scram. Stick around, stay tuned, let's see what we get up to today. So if you're not familiar with uh, Biker Scram with Jeff and Dan, it's the occasional series here on the channel where I go and meet up with a couple of uh, biking pals and we go and find a cafe somewhere and have a bite to eat, usually involving a chip mountain with Dan and maybe a bit of black pudding. And then we rate said cafe. It's just an excuse to get out, have a chat about motorbikes and have a nice ride, really. And what a beautiful day to be doing it on. At last, summer is here. I'm recording this on May the uh, 10th, I think it is. And uh, I have to say, the weather so far this, in quote summer, hasn't been brilliant. So it's a real treat to come out on a day like this. I know there's a bit of cloud about. There is some rain forecast a bit later in the day, but uh, it's, uh, what, 15 degrees, 14 degrees, according to the bike, which is the sort of temperature that I decide it's, uh, it's comfortable to ride without having to truss yourself up in thermal underwear and all that game. The roads are basically dry and I'm on one of my favourite motorbikes of all time. All is well with the world. So where are we off to today? I hear you cry. Well, I'm uh, meeting up with the guys just outside Oxford in the uh, Cotswoldy village of Insham at a place called Refuel. I've never been there before. It's basically a service station I think that might have a cafe attached. But uh, I'm told it's quite prominent on the A40, so a good meeting place. I'm supposed to be meeting there at 11.30. It's 10 to 11 now, so hopefully I'm going to be around about on time. And then from there, we've got a cracking ride that Dan has come up with to a village called Bybury, which is in the Cotswolds. And we're going up there to uh, somewhere called the Classic Motor Hub, which has a cafe associated with it. And I think some nicer... Uh, bits of motor machinery as well not just bikes but cars as well I think so as ever on uh, Bikers Ground I've done absolutely no research I don't know if the place is open we might not be able to get in there but we'll find out anyway let me head towards Oxford I've got about as I say half an hour or so to get there and uh, see if we can find the guys right first little problem of the day just got a uh, amber warning come up look on the dash got a low tire pressure warning 2.2 bar it's saying on the rear tyre. I don't know if that's just that the tyre was a bit low anyway because I have to be honest I haven't checked the tyre pressures for a while and I haven't ridden this bike for a little while so it might just be low anyway. Let's hope it's not an actual puncture. Anyway where we are meeting up I shall keep an eye on that pressure to see how quickly it goes down but uh, hopefully where we're meeting up is a fuel station. I could do with some fuel anyway and hopefully we can get some air in the tyre there so I want to keep an eye on. I've not had a tyre pressure monitoring system error for a long time well, I hadn't uh, realised quite how much information it gives you I pressed the little uh, triangle on the sat nav look and it tells me that the pressure is at the limit of the approved range the rear wheel is at 31.9 psi and I always write my tyre pressures on here because I never remember them it should be 42 psi so uh, yeah it's a few down the front's at 32.8 that should be 36 so that's low as well actually so I suspect they just need a bit of pumping up because I haven't checked them for ages more fool me anyway on for the garage this looks sort of hopeful. How do we get in here? Yeah, this is the one. Refuel Cafe. Nip around here quick. So we can find the chaps, they'll definitely be here. If there's any air there. Hmm. Aha, some bikes. Three bikes, no less. Right, let's go and find the chaps. Go and find some air and crack on. Right, just found the chaps in there having a quick coffee. While they're finishing off the coffee, I'm going to go and sort my tyres out of the garage next door. So I'll do that and then I'll uh, have a proper chat and say hello to the chaps. But first, some fuel, some Supreme E5. Might as well give it the good stuff. Let's go and find some air. Crikey, look at this. You have to pay for fresh air. I don't know. What does it come to? £1.50. Minimum air spend is 50p. Alrighty, let's give it a try. That'll do.
42 got there in the end excellent right i found the gents and we're at this place here it says kingsley on the outside but you gents told me that it was called um refuel it is refuel king okay. at kingsley cars ah so right. you, you could pick up your you know nice classic range rover here while you're having a a frappuccino. Excellent. And you had a bit of a coffee before I got here, rather sneakily, didn't you? Well, Jeff was Jeff was paying, so I couldn't oh, pass up the opportunity. Out. Fair did, I, did, I did miss out there, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it looks a great place, though, doesn't it? And we particularly like the sign as well. <laughs> oh, a, wa a white van has just parked in front of it, but we sneakily got uh, somebody to take a picture of us before uh, before we before it got here. Anyway, <laughs> big news. I noticed you got a different bike. Have I? Tell us about it. Woo! Spook, so I have. Yes. It's Taffy the Triumph. Let's have a look. It's Taffy the Triumph. I, got, I called it Taffy because I got it on St David's Day and it sprung a leak later the same day. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be a triumph though, would it, without a leak? Well, yeah, but it was an oil leak. OK. No, well, no, well, no, well. it was a coolant leak. The, it hadn't been sort of built properly and so the, one of the coolant hoses was running round on the front sprocket which gradually wore its way through till I got home and then dumped all the uh, coolant out on the front drive. Not a great advert for the new Tiger it 900. Wasn't, it wasn't brilliant, but I started out on a Tiger 90. That had a leak. Yep. That was my first bike after passing my test. Now I've gone to a 900, and Next, that's got a leak. Now, last time we met over at the Kawasaki dealer, I seem to remember you were saying you are going to get a Versus 650. So right. what changed your mind? Um, I didn't want to go down that far on performance. I think that was the basic right. reason. Right, right. Um, I looked... I looked at the 650 long and hard and I thought, it looks like the one I've already got. Yep. It's quite a drop in performance power wise. Yep. And I was looking all around that sort of mid range because of the old dodgy knees. And um, eventually I went to Bulldog Triumph in Wokenham yep. to have a look at the 660. And I thought, you know what, I don't like it. Yeah. Don't, didn't like the look of it at all. Right. And the missus was with me and she was walking around the showroom and she said, hey, come and have a look at this. So I had a look at that and I thought, oh, I like that. They are good, aren't they? And they... She, she said, I like that. Oh, well, you're in then. Come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So, <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> so other than the leak, so far so good, getting on with the right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a very, very good motorcycle. There's no two ways about it. There's a lot to like about it. And there's also some little annoyances as well, yep. which are in the design. I mean, the big thing for me, I had to put a hugger on it and I didn't yep. realise when I bought it until I got it home that it didn't have one as standard. I mean, yeah, come on, very Triumph. Few bikes do. That's quite a neat one you got there, isn't it? Let's look at that. So, there we go. Power bronze jobby. Yeah, power bronze. Yeah, yeah looks puck, doesn't it? I mean, I, you say it, not many do, but yeah. actually, a lot of them do have them. Yamahas have them, Kawasaki's well, some do, have them, but all it's, fitted as but standard. But it's a common complaint I get when I do bike reviews, people saying that why hasn't he got a proper mudguard or no hugger? Uh, and they do tend to throw a lot of crap over themselves. Well, they, the, so. particularly these, and yeah, yeah. and they've got a little little hole in the back um, tail tidy thing there as well, which also Just accelerates the water right up the back of the bike and the front of the top box, which isn't very good. Anyway, great, looks lovely. Enjoy. Yeah. We'll see how oh, it goes yeah, yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Dan. Uh, oh, he's doing something pr uh, Where are we off to today? Bybury, you tell me. We're off to Bybury, the charming yep. hamlet of Bybury in the Cotswolds, famous for its trout farm and for Arlington Row. Right, it is. Uh, and we're going to crest the hill coming out of Bybury and go to the classic motor hub, which is at what was RAF Bybury. Excellent, and I hear it's a great ride there. It's a fantastic ride. We're going to go all round that. We're going to go through. We're going to follow the Upper Thames Valley. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Alrighty, it's about an hour's ride apparently. I'm going to follow the chaps. And we're off. Well, that place there looked uh, really good actually, that Kingsley Cafe. Shame I missed out on the uh, coffee from Jeff. <laughs> Probably worth coming back just to visit that one. One for another biker scram, perhaps. Now, as I've said before, uh, Dan knows this area quite well. So if he says this is a good route, it's going to be a good route. So these clouds are starting to look a little bit angry. <laughs> There's always a bit of debate in your mind when you're riding blightly, isn't there, about what sort of kit to wear. The forecast for today has been that there was going to be some sharp showers pretty much all over the country. So I decided to not bring my waterproof gear. <laughs> a decision I may regret. Although the jacket I'm wearing, I think is showerproof at least. But it's not cold. 
18 and a half degrees the uh, the bike is telling me now and it's just a real treat to be out on the bike it's a real treat to be out on the uh, on the big beamer Jeff's looking very settled on his new bike I do like a Tiger 900 me I was saying to Jeff uh, if and when I ever get to replace my adventure bike then the 900 will definitely be in the mix but I'm pleased to say the uh, warning I was getting from my tyre pressure management system has now cleared now I've put some air in the tyre so good news all is well once again with the bike I feel a little bit embarrassed that I didn't check the tyres before I came out having not ridden the bike for a while that's one of the, and this sounds outrageous I know, but one of the downsides of uh, having a number of motorcycles I've currently got six, five is that you don't uh, necessarily do all the checks as frequently as you probably should do or you forget when you rode the last one when and when you last checked the tyres, that sort of thing so it's going to give me a reminder to go around them all and just check the tyres So having said that uh, Dan knows this area pretty well I have to say I don't know it that well um, I know this area mostly from uh, Burford, which I come to occasionally, it's a nice little town, a place where uh, Harry's Garage is done of course, and also uh, Fairford isn't too far around here, and as an aviation anorak, Fairford is somewhere very close to my heart, because they have a very big military air show there every year that I enjoy going to, this year being no exception, see you there. And yeah, we're not a million miles from either of those places. There is some cracking countryside around here, unfortunately at the moment, we are somewhat stuck behind, well I doesn't say stuck behind this van, but in fact it's the car in front that's uh, slowing us down. That looks like he's turning off. Alright, things are starting to look a little bit more Cotswoldy to my eyes now, because of the stone that these houses are made out of, even though there's a new look, built in Cotswold stone. That was a village of Stand Lake. Very pretty. Oh, I can't tell you how good it is to be back out on my own GS. As great as it is to ride other people's bikes on tours abroad and stuff like that, or reviewing bikes, whatever, the bikes I really like riding are my own, and I get such little opportunity to do that these days. It's one of the uh, surprising downsides of being a motorcycle YouTuber. You don't actually get to ride your own bikes that much, and when you do, you really do appreciate them. This bike now is getting a bit long in the tooth. It's a 2014 plate, I think. Might even be a 2013. So 10 years old, still rides as good as the day I bought it, love the GS, cracking motorcycle. Another cracking Cotswoldy village, this is Bampton. Flags are out by the War Memorial. You might uh, recognise it here if you're a fan of Henry Cole's TV programmes. He often does a lot of filming in Bampton. And what a quintessentially English village it is too. I tell you what, I'm always moaning about riding in the south of England, particularly in the southeast, and uh, I love riding away in warm climates and all that game. But actually, what I love best, riding around English countryside like this, on a day like this, okay, it could be sunnier, but it's just a thoroughly pleasant thing to do. It's what biking's all about, as far as I'm concerned. And pretty much next door to Bampton is this place, Clanfield. Ooh, Clanfield Tavern. That looks alright, doesn't it? Nice. Another excellent looking pub there, the Swan. Just as it's starting to rain, as promised. Let's hope it doesn't get too much harder than this. 
So I didn't listen to the sensible voice in my head before I left that said, put your rucker kit on, it's gonna rain. I looked at the Microsoft weather forecast and it said there was no rain, even though uh, the forecast on the TV said there are gonna be some sharp showers anywhere in the country today. So it serves me right, wearing the wrong kit. Oh well, just gonna have to man up a bit. What a lovely little place, this is Farringdon. Well, what a beautiful part of the world this is. Even in the rain, you don't always appreciate what's on your doorstep, do you? Blossoms out, summer's just around the corner. Well, technically it is summer. This is British summer, folks. <laughs> Hopefully it'll get a little bit better than this for maybe a week. Once again, the flags are out. Right, well, we've made it to the Classic Motor Hub, but it is absolutely chucking it down. There's a Classic Motor there, that'll be a Porsche if I'm not mistaken. Luckily, it's quite warm inside, so that's good news. I'll just show you what it looks like from the outside, just so you've got it. There we go, looks like that when you're here. But I'm not going around because my head's getting wet. Right, now apparently it's pasties on the menu today. Where did Dan go? He's going to uh, squirt that. Okay, I'll say no more. Anyway, we've got a horse's doofer, a little starter. We've got a cheese and onion pasty to go with whilst we wait for our proper steak pasties to cook. So uh, let's dig in, Jeff, shall we, in his why absence? Why we do that? Yeah, yeah. We'll leave him the smallest bit. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I don't know, are you an end man or a middle man? I don't mind. I'll, I'll, have, the, I'll have this. I'm going for an end, there. actually. Yeah, 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 we'll give him that. We'll leave Dan the biggest yeah. bit. I'm not sure cheese and onion actually makes a real pasty here. Well, it's like a lot of things, isn't it? It can't be a real pasta if it's cheese and onion. Exactly. It's a cheese and onion turbo thing. But it's warm. Yeah. So it's all right. Right, while we're waiting for our pastas to cook, the uh, the rain has stopped slightly, and apparently there's quite a lot to see here. Now, you know about this place more than me, Dan, don't you? The uh, So there's, what is it, a salesy type situation? So. Well, it's, it's a classic car showroom. It's, it's the sort of place to come to if you've got your red trousers and loafers on. Nice. Not us then, not us then. We're window shopping, strictly window shopping then. Right, lead on. You have a cravat. <laughs> I beg your pardon? That's just the way he's been. Porsche man, are you? No, I drove one once and um, entirely disappointed I was. Yeah, I, I drove a yellow one. I quite like the colour, but I was a little bit disappointed as well. But yeah. but then when you say you drove a Porsche, I mean, they come in many oh, yeah. flavours, unless you know what you're talking True. about, yes, which exactly. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure some of them are very good. I do think I've right. seen my next car. Have you? Would it be oh, that Ferrari by chance? <laughs> well, this looks all right, doesn't it? Wow. Well, let's, well, let's start here. There are bikes tucked away in corners as well. Never mind bikes. Look at this thing. What on earth is that? This... So this here Ferrari, look, that's uh, okay. I know so little about Ferraris. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Other than I like them. I'm just uh, the, the, those, but, those brakes are just a thing of beauty. Yeah, look at that. Nice set of Brembos. We'll have a wander about. Jeff, this has got you written all over it. This Austin Healey, look at that. Yeah. That is a beauty. Is it you being a Leicester man? You Leicestershire. Is it? Yeah. That's a beauty, isn't it? You. Let's have a little look inside yeah. that one. That's my sort of vehicle, that. These are actually pretty expensive these days, aren't they, as well? Look at that. Lovely. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, exactly, you can't afford it. Actually, it's not. What, we, what are we talking? It's less than 50. Is it? Bargain, then. I'll have two. I tell you what, Dan. They haven't managed to make 48 them. grand, if you fancy one. <laughs> An MV Augusta, 750. What? That was, that was the classic, yeah. before, what do I need to know about this bike, Dan? Uh, so is it early 70s? Something like that. 
I don't know a lot about him to be honest, over and above the fact that Agostini rode him and, and of course Mike the Bike rode MV as well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, and this was their entry into the sort of superbike market. Yeah. Was it? Cool Hi. looking thing. Yeah, yeah. Italian though, so say no more. Yeah, right, probably, moving on. Probably nicer than the, the Ducati. Careful, careful, Geoffrey. Had a guy. <laughs> Look at that. What are you looking at? That Citroen. Citroen Maserati. Now that is a classic, isn't it? There's something about these old Citroens, isn't there? Yeah. Didn't they have that, uh, was it hydroelastic suspension? Something like that. I walked or was it air suspension? I can't remember. Well, it's got a super cool push button radio sideways on. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Well, I probably can't see it through the reflection there. But an interesting mounting option for the radio. Oh, What's this? Grill. Nice it's little so detail, nice. isn't it? Just lovely. Is it functional, do you think? Yeah, must be. Great colour as well. well you, get, you get a monkey change out of 50 grand with this. So you've got the, you've got the choice, the Citroen. You've got 50 grand burning a hole in your pocket. You can have the Citroen or the Austin Healy. Citroen you? Maserati, let's be is right. That, is it? Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's not just a Citroen. I do apologise. It's not just a lemon. It's not just a Citroen. It's an M&S. Maserati <laughs> yes. Citroen. Is <laughs> that IMG here? Oh, some boxer power. What on earth is that thing there, Jeff? What does that do? That <laughs> is a pre electric foot. <laughs> Wild, and that That'd engine. Be a Kickstarter. Have you ever used well one of those? before I, I tried once, failed miserably. So, uh... <laughs> and, it's on, and it's on the wrong side. Yes, but not if you're on the other side of the road. Fair point. You gotta have a funny shaped leg to kick that, haven't you? Actually, you cannot do it while you sat, or does it spin I mean, round? You go that way. Of course, of course. Because the funny orientation of the engine, of course. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the shaft drive. Yeah. So it comes straight out the back of the gearbox, doesn't it, into the wheel? Nice. Oh, what's that over there? It's another one. It's an uh, GS. Oh, blimey! The original. Look at that. The guys, effectively from the sort of design department, just said, "Look, why don't we make one of these?" And um, it just took off. What a good move that turned out to be. It's, it was the original big adventure bike. Yeah. Up until then, you know, 250s and Tenere's and things like that, six, 500, 600 trail bike, yeah. about as far as you went. And the Japanese have made some huge single cylinder bikes, yeah, like yeah. The, the, yeah. the Suzuki big DR650. Yeah, yeah. XT500 yeah. Yamahas. And... Looks in top nick, this one, doesn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Incredible looking at the shaft drive, how light that looks as well compared oh, to modern ADV. day ones. ADV, Adventure. Oh, very clever. 628X. Very good. This looks interesting. It's a Chevrolet. Is it? A Chevy, some American muscle. Star, Let's have a look in. Nice. Yeah, anything where the steering wheel comes off is usually pretty serious, isn't it? Yeah. Right, well, I reckon our pasties it's must be ready, don't you? 95. Oh, that'll do. We haven't seen the main Chevy yet. Oh, go on then. Walk yeah, on. There's more. Is there? Oh, there's more. It's the predecessor to the Bristol. What, this BMW? It's a Fraser Nash BMW. Fraser Nash were the BMW importers pre-war, pre-Second World War. Yep. And after the Second World War, they were taken over by the, uh, an offshoot of the Bristol Aeroplane Company. Right. Who made Bristol motor cars. Cool. Yeah, 175,000, that one. Yeah. If you fancy a Fraser Nash nice. BMW. Nice, Actually, I rather like this. I'll have the Bentley race car. You've got an eight on the front, so I assume it's a V8. It's a beast, isn't it? Optimistic or just a frightening prospect? <laughs> and cart springing. Yeah. So it turns out that wasn't even the main event. There's another. There's another hangar basically here. Jaguar. What is that? An XK8. I don't. Is it? I don't know. Again, the old Jaguars. I'm not very good on, but it's it's a lovely thing. XK150. Beautiful. Wow, a clutch of F types. E types, even. Got F types on the brain. A few Aston Martins. 
another Austin Healy there. And an actual AC Cobra, not a, not a replica. Nice. Dan's found himself a, a Norton. Manx Norton? Uh, no, that's no, not Manx, it's a twin. I, I, it, might be a domi I, it might be a Dominator. Certainly looks the biz, doesn't it? Road holder forks, it's all very nice. Francis Barnett, Model 3, apparently. A snip at six grand, if you fancy doing your commute on that. Another Moto Guzzi. Other side, you might see the bacon slicer. The bacon slicer? What, on the motor Gutsy? Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. There she is. Look at that. That's a Falcone. It's a Falcone I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. <laughs> what does that do then? Is that some sort of. Uh, what's no. the function of the bacon slicer? Uh, no, it's, it's the, it's, it's the um, flywheel. Oh, cool. But it, it, it's exter it's it actually it's flies exposed. around there. It's not inside there. Oh, right. No, that, no, no. Oh, wow. Let's have another look then. Now we're, now we're seeing. Okay. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Well, imagine your boot getting caught on that. Wild. And the Italian police were being supplied with these up until the early 1970s, I think. Oh, oh Moto Grizzly. Oh, Ducati. Like the colour scheme. Like the colour scheme on that. It's a teeny tiny, Isn't it tiny? 48 that's when Aston Martins look like Aston Martins as well. Right, must be pasty time. Right, the good news is the pasties have turned up. What are we thinking on an initial impressions of the looks of it uh, there, Jeff? Well, it looks very pasty-ish, doesn't it? It does. How hot is it, I want? Is it going to be a burn the roof of your mouth off job? Absolute fruit tree. <laughs> okay. Right, we'll uh, eat them quietly and carefully and we'll report back. Now, should a pasty have vegetables in it? Yes. Because this looks like it's just got potato and beef. Sorry about that. But it was the tin miners all in one meal, wasn't mm, it? That was the original ready meal. I think half was supposed to be jam and half was supposed to be meat, wasn't it? That's... I think there were, there were ones like that, yeah. But also, the crust was the bit that they held it. Yeah, exactly. So you don't they, get them they, poisoned by yeah, the... And they threw that away. By the arsenic they? in their hands. Exactly. All right, pass is imbibed, and, and it was joyous while we were in there because we realised it had stopped raining. Yeah. And then as soon as we walk out the door, it started again. Although as soon as I said that, it stopped, it stopped again. again. But there we no, go. It's, it's anyway, playing with us, toying with us. Yeah. So normally we come to cafes and we enjoy the food. This place really wasn't just about the food, was it? No. It was about the toys that we saw. Yes. So I think we can say thumbs up for the place anyway because the toys were so good yes. yes but just talking about food for completeness sake i know what your score always is is this going to be any different dan uh no i think i'm going to stick with it because actually although the choice is fairly limited they were proper homemade sort of pasties weren't choice they? They being were... limited as in pasty or pasty yeah, yeah that's fairly <laughs> well, limited no, no, you, you could have had a sausage roll or a oh. chicken and mushroom thing that's true bake yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so you're yeah. going eight I think so because actually it was a very nice pasty. The choice is a bit limited, but it's not. It's not pretending to be a, a, no, a, no, a calf. No, true, 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 true. All right, Jeff. Uh, I find it hard to score really. I mean, certainly the filling was very nice, mm. if volcanic. Yes, yes, true. You know, uh, the forty-minute wait. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I appreciate that. But they probably would have been ready in twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so score. Yeah, and score. Yeah, I think as far as pasties go, I found the crust a bit hard. Seven and a half. I think they're being, you're being quite generous. I'm a bit of a pasty connoisseur and recently went to Cornwall and had a, what I regard oh, to be well, a proper yes, pasty, yeah. which did have vegetables in it too. Mm. Uh, and I have to say, I don't think that was a great pasty. Great place. I would definitely come again, no doubt about that. I'm going to give it a six. Ooh. And they also, I paid for it. They weren't the cheapest of pasties either, I have to say. Ah, oh, right. Anyway. <laughs> what, what do you expect? Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> what do we expect indeed? So next time we'll go for a bit more... A gastronomic place. I think we go for a more traditional. No, 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 no. We've got to go to Letchley. Oh, the Black Pudding Cafe. The Black Pudding Cafe. <laughs> Apparently, we passed somewhere called the Black Pudding Cafe and on the Dan way. Dan didn't even notice. Nor did I. Shows how observant we were being. Oh no, Mrs. Dan. Mrs. Dan's been hide, hiding it for keeping it well, out of my sight. The thing was, what I was looking for was the Christmas shop that's along that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that gone now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, no, it's there. Was no, it no, still there? Because I was going to point yeah. it out and go, yeah, yeah, look, yeah, look, look, yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah, yeah. shop, and then I saw the Black Pudding Cafe. Well, I think this is our Christmas special, then, isn't it? Well, this one. No, no, the, 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 oh, the, the next one, the Black Pudding and the Christmas it's shop. It's very confusing. Let's try and do another one for the years out in some actual sunshine, shall we? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Well, Wellsbourne. That was that. We quite fancy Wellsbourne or Pat's Baps. 
Pat's Baps, it sounds like an appealing place, isn't it? I don't know where it is, but maybe Pat's Baps, we're coming to see you next time. <laughs> right, cheerio chaps. Excellent to see the chaps again. That was the classic car hub. Going to follow down a little way back to uh, sort of Burford Way. And then we shall break off there, I think is the plan. Right, well it's all looking a bit damp out, but at least the rain has stopped. So that's good news. So that was the classic car hub at Bybury. Great venues you saw, I mean, we sort of skirted around the, uh, the sheds there and looked at the cars and didn't really do it justice in any way. I realise if you're a car aficionado, you will have been cringing at our descriptions or lack of, of those vehicles. Amazing place. And yeah, food not great to be fair, but the actual venue made up for that. Alrighty, I've got about a uh, 60 70 mile ride home. Thank you, sir. Not liking the look of these clouds ahead, so maybe I'll get a little bit damp. But that's it for another biker scrap with Jeff and Dan. Thank you to Jeff and Dan as ever for, uh, well, organising the trip basically. Dan came up with the route and it's been an absolute cracker. I mean, how beautiful is this? And hopefully we'll get another one in before the uh, end of the year, before the weather starts to close in again on us. Not that uh, it's been great so far. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. and Flyer. Cheerio.